Hi there, I hope you're doing great today. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to isolate an image from its background using Corel Painter. You can use Painter version 12 or the new X3, or you could even use Photoshop for this. Uh, what we'll be doing is creating a mask and we'll use the mask to uh, remove the background. So I'll show you how I like to do this. I recommend that you have a tablet for this. If you don't have a tablet, this is going to be really hard, if not impossible. So uh, have a tablet installed and ready to go, and we can go ahead and get started. So first thing that we need to do is have an image open. You can have any image you want. I'm going to work with this cat here, and we need to save it by doing a save as. And we need to save it as a different format. So let's just save it as a painter riff format here. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it cat. And we've got it saved here. Now what we want to do is we want to take this image and put it on its own layer. So we'll do a select all from the select menu. Then we'll do an edit cut from the edit menu. And a paste in place from the edit menu. And now our image is on its own layer. We can call it image. And now we'll just select this image in the layers palette. And it should give us these options here. If we don't convert it to RIF or PSD, there's a chance that you might not be able to add a mask if it's still in JPEG format. So if you're having, if you can't see this little mask icon here, you might still be in JPEG format and you'll have to save it as a RIF. So with the layer selected that we want to add the mask to, we'll, we'll click the new layer mask icon here and that adds a mask. So the thing to watch out for here is that you have kind of these two options here for where you're going to be painting. One, when it's selected, will paint in the mask. The other will paint onto your image here, which we don't want to do. So we want to make sure that we have this little icon here selected when we're working in the mask. So really quickly, I'll kind of show you how masks work. If you'll watch down here in this little icon, you'll be able to see some stuff going on. So if I paint into my mask, I can paint into it with black or gray or white doesn't really deal with color, it just deals with black and white. And if I paint into it with black, what will happen is it will essentially erase an area of my image where I painted this black. So I'm going to paint a big corner here. I'm just going to paint out the whole corner. And when I stop painting, watch down here in my channels palette. Watch what happens down here. That black area appears. This white area you see here is the background. So if I turn off the canvas layer, this checkerboard pattern represents transparency. So where you see this checkerboard, there is nothing. It's fully erased right here. And if you see down here in my channels palette, uh, that's represented by this black area. So painting black erases. It doesn't erase permanently though. If I add some more to my mask here and I accidentally erase the leg, if I just take white, it will do the opposite. It will bring it back. So if I paint with white, into my mask, I can bring the leg back. Now the reason, reason why we want to do this instead of use the eraser is that we need to be able to paint back and forth to be able to get all these little individual hairs and it would just be really really hard to do using the eraser but using a mask it's much easier. So what we'll do is we'll continue painting in our mask and again make sure you're painting in your mask because if you're not and you have your layers selected and you paint with black you're going to paint black over your image, or in my case, I'm painting black over my cat, and I don't want to do that. So I want to make sure that my mask is selected here by clicking on this little mask icon. I'm tapping with my pen on it to make sure it's selected. And I'm painting with a custom scratch board tool, which is just a basic scratch board tool that's found in the pens category, and it's set to 100% opacity. That's really important. You want to be uh, making sure that you're fully masking this out with 100% black at full opacity. Otherwise, you're just going to kind of erase it and it's going to be a little transparent. And that's not going to be good. So don't use something like the airbrush because if you check this out, if I erase lightly, you can see if I zoom in closely, it's not fully trans, it's not fully erased here. It's just a little transparent. So for a lot of this big stuff, use a fully opaque brush. 
If you have trouble seeing the background, what you can do is you can create a new layer here in your layers palette and just call it background or whatever you want to call it. And we use the paint bucket selected here. Make sure your fill is set to current color. Select a neutral gray color and we'll just fill the background by tapping on it. And now our background is filled with this gray. Now if we go back to our image and back to our mask, make sure our mask is selected and select black. And again, make sure you're selecting black and white by holding all the way to the left and make sure you're hugging this wall. My cursor has gone even beyond the palette here. I'm making sure that I'm pulling as far away as I can to make sure that I'm not getting any color, any hue or any saturation. You want these two settings to always be at zero when you're picking this white and this black. So I'm going to zero, zero, zero for black. Going back to my scratchboard tool, painting in my mask with black is erasing. So I'm just going to try to erase most of this background. I'll just continue here. Now you're going to get up on some areas where you might have to fill in some details or make some modifications. That being like where the grass covers the tail here. I'm going to have to fix that. I'm really going to have to kind of use my imagination here because there's a shadow, so I can't really tell what the fur is at. I'm going to have to kind of guess. And of course there's some grass on the face. I'll have to edit that out too. Right now we're just trying to get most of the background removed. Don't go too close to your edge because you need to be able to see these edges, especially around here, to be able to judge where to erase in areas where you're kind of just flying blindly here. So I'll get it pretty close like that. We'll zoom in a little bit closer and we're going to switch brushes now. And we will switch to the airbrush here and you'll want to make sure that when you're using it uh, you set your opacity to 100%. That way you won't have any transparency issues. And you kind of have to play around with your brush size. You want to paint with the edge of your brush rather than the center and you want to kind of ease into what you're erasing or masking. See, I'm kind of easing into it. I'm not I'm not using the center of the brush to try to paint like this with one continuous line. That doesn't work very well. I'm kind of scrubbing back and forth and easing into it because it's fur. And sometimes you want to keep some of this light stuff. Don't erase all this light. You have to kind of really use your eye and your judgment here because this light area might be a light part of his fur. It might not be the grass. But that's the reason why we're masking is because in case we do make a mistake, uh, we can still go back and forth by using a white to bring back some of this stuff that we erased. This is called non-destructive editing. So we're editing, but we're not risking uh, destroying or permanently altering anything. This is just temporary. And if we're satisfied with it when we're done, uh, we'll keep it and We'll have a nice isolated image. If we're not satisfied with it, well, we can uh, keep modifying it till we are. You see, it's pretty easy. I'm using a drawing tablet here, so doing this with a mouse would not be as easy. I'm varying my pressure. If I need to, I'm making my brush smaller. I'm using a keyboard shortcut where I'm holding down Control and Alt and then dragging my pen to resize my brush and where I need to I will make it smaller. You want to have a pretty big brush because you want these edges to be as soft as the edges in your of your object here. So just watch out for these edges here and make sure that you make them appropriately either sharp or very smooth. And in this case for the cat since he's got fur it's going to be pretty smooth edges here. Just trying to be pretty clean about this and not not erase too much, not erase too little, because I can always go back if I erase too much. And I draw with a tablet a lot, so you might not be able to do this quite as fast at first. 
but after you practice a bit, you'll be able to. Just making a smaller brush where I need to. And again, I'm leaving some of this light area because these are highlights that are on the fur. They're not necessarily grass. And then I'm using light pressure to kind of go in here and just kind of erase little bits of the edge with light pressure to kind of fade it out. You get something kind of like this. Again, using really, really light pressure for this stuff. This longer fur needs to have a softer edge. The shorter fur, like on his feet here, can have a pretty sharp edge. On the tail, you need to soften it a little bit. Not to be too firm. And then, I won't worry about all this grass yet here. We'll get to that in a minute. I think we're getting pretty close here to what we want. And it's kind of up to you to keep what you want to keep and get rid of what you want to get rid of. It really depends on how you're going to composite the piece as well. And this might have a different background and I might find that I missed a few spots, but for this example, I think it's looking pretty good. See some edges that are still too sharp. Zooming out helps to get a feel for all that stuff. Now, the secret to getting rid of all of this extra junk on the inside, we need to exit our mask and just go to the regular layer here and make sure that our regular layer is selected. Turn on Preserve Transparency. And then we can use something like Distorto to push away some of these pixels that we don't want. And we can use the airbrush. Hold Alt on our keyboard and sample some of this tail color and just paint that back in. You could use the cloning brush too if you wanted to, or you can just paint it in. Pretty much the same difference here. You can also try to just blur some of it using a blender. Lots of different things will work to get rid of this. And you can even paint away these edges if you want. And you kind of can go in and paint in some of these details that weren't there before. That's kind of the cool thing about this. Oops. something there. You can see it's pretty easy to get rid of all this extra stuff. Blend it up a little bit with one of these blenders. And some of this stuff will just pull away. I think more or less we've got a pretty good isolated image. Now, I recommend saving your file and then saving a copy because we're going to go ahead and apply this mask permanently. That'll kind of be the point of no return. So if you have a copy of your file without it being flattened, uh, you'll be able to go back to that if you need to. Let's go ahead and apply this mask after we've saved a copy. So we will just right click or use the button, the right click button on our pen to enable this little menu here by clicking on our mask and we'll go to apply layer mask. So that's going to permanently delete those pixels that were masked off. So now we just have this cat here. Now we can do some stuff to the edges. If we need to further blend our edges, we can use diffuse blur. 
or any other kind of blender to blend on these edges if we want to. We need to turn off preserve transparency first though. You could even use coarse oily blender if you really wanted to pull out some long hairs here. Kind of make this edge look a little more natural. Do that with some of these belly hairs here. And on the end of the tail, you can see I can kind of make the fur look more jagged. Because all this stuff kind of gets lost when you erase the edges or mask the edges. And then you can go back through with the diffuse blur brush. And kind of soften that. And this is really kind of up to you how much you want to do this or whether or not you want to even do this at all. It helps though, especially for hair on people, you might need to pull out some hairs off of their head to kind of fill in some hairs that you erased too many of. So now this cat is isolated and if we go to our background layer we can oops, we can do pretty much anything that we want to that background. And our cat's now there on his own. And if we want to uh, rotate it, we can using the free transform tool. We can make some kind of crazy looking flying cat here. We'll scale it a little bit and move it around. Maybe we'll go ahead and make a sky background for him to fly around in. Oops. I'll just paint in a real quick sky. Go for something kind of photorealistic so it matches a little bit here. Put in some ground. And there you go, we got a nice flying cat that's isolated from its background. And again, we can take it and we can move it around anywhere. You could do this with people, you could do this with any sort of object that you want to isolate uh, in a painting or an image. So I hope this was informative for you. If you found this information useful, take a quick second to like this video or share it on YouTube and that'll make it easier for other artists out there to find it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.